Hello everyone, welcome to Tier Weekly episode 9. Uh, I am Osiris and I'm here joined by McCheese as per usual. Yeah, it's no surprise there I guess. Hey guys, sorry. Um, so I'm good. thanks. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, I was talking about I was talking to the guys, talking oh, to the internet. I'm sorry. Well fuck <laughs> you then. But oh, sorry, Osiris. how are you, Osiris? I am really good. How are you? <laughs> oh I'm at burger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am actually quite fine. Great. Good. I just went shopping today, oh. and I'm now more or less ready for Norway. Nobody's ready hiking. for Norway. Nobody. It's <laughs> going to be like a hurricane and tsunami. Everything at once will hit. I am. I'm ready for rain, and we'll I'm ready for snow, and I'm ready for all that stuff. Deathwing. Think... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was doing a Deathwing video <laughs> cinematic quote. Have you noticed that 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 the, the voice in that cinematic has gone worse every expansion? I don't know. I just felt like really fake in Cataclysm, like that. Seriously, I, I, I kind of like the Cataclysm cinematic, but I seem to be the only one. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, the cinematic was good, but just the voice was just like yeah, that's probably too dramatic. The the dragon voice is always seems to be a bit off. I uh, I don't know. They they are never never dragon? dragonish, if you will. The the dragon voices. What do you think about dragons? Oh man, I'm not I'm not talking about that dragon. I haven't I haven't heard that one speak yet. No. But then again, anyways, um, <laughs> that's, it's getting that's worse every time. I admit you're getting kind of fast at it, but it is getting worse every time. <laughs> but uh, all right. So what have hey, we done last, last week? week? Oh, what? Yeah, you read week. my mind. I was just gonna. <laughs> Mind tricks. I, am, am I allowed to talk now? I, I, I cool. Can I? Okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, right. So last week we had been playing a bit of beta, uh, which means what? that we we talked a whole lot about this beta. And you know we went. So they made a, a whole ton of changes, and we have tried as many of them as we could. And you know we, we were talking. We were going through them, talking a lot about the. U changes to the game and you know what we've been doing in general which events we participated in the what was world all that stuff um pretty much a better so, recap of what we've done yeah yeah exactly and then we went on to talk about the necromancer profession necromancer uh, which necromancer. you played a bit also yes huh? i did and uh, my conclusion was that it's pretty fun and definitely unique like every profession uh but not for me I think. I don't know. I've played four levels. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> yeah, what do you know? <laughs> so, oh. yeah, that was last week. And this week we'll be talking about a little bit of Rift news uh, because it's quite interesting to see uh, the changes that they're making to their system. Um, we'll be talking uh, about guild related news, of course. Uh, some things got announced these last few days and hours. Um, and then our topic for this week, or our main topic, will be uh, we will be talking a bit about uh, fun and pay-to-play versus free-to-play, how that all intertwines together into uh, a discussion of uh, game design and, you know, us players, uh, how we receive that. Um, and then after that, we'll be talking a little bit about the thief. So that's uh, that's what we're going to talk yes, about. The lovely thief. The lovely thief. Which I've actually played as well for a little bit in the first beta weekend, but later uh, <laughs> about that more info. Um, what uh, are you clicking in the the document for? <laughs> like, this, <laughs> <laughs> well, next thing is on the list what we've been doing this week, but uh, I guess we've touched a bit on it with your getting ready for Norway. Yeah, but what have you been doing? I have actually. Uh, move my daughter's room downstairs in our house uh, yeah which is which having is an interesting side effect yeah yes but also um, I actually bought Anno 2070 today and I played that for yeah. a little bit uh, I actually never told you that I don't. Know. I always keep you in the loop with everything I do every second every day <laughs> even when I go to the toilet but yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> when did I miss out on this <laughs> Ever since that Steam app came out on the phone, that was just oh god. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I played that, and I... Um, is it any good? It is good, and ever confusing for a first-time user, as all the other Anno games. But it's it's quite cool. Um, other than that, gaming-wise, I haven't really done much, uh, besides our Rift adventure. Yeah, true enough. We have to get on with that as well. Hmm. Uh, I would just say I've been playing a bit of uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood over the last couple of weeks. Uh, picked it up on Steam when it was on sale because I, I've always it seems to be the best Assassin's Creed game out there right now. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in the third one, but Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is is the thing apparently right now, and it's actually pretty good. Even though I'm getting this whole it was made for a controller for a console and all that is kind of pissing me off. Because I really don't like the control that much. What, what I understand is that every PC gamer should own a controller at some point. Yeah, that's that's where we're getting at, I'm afraid. Yeah. They also and, and you know, for some games, it is really nice to have a controller, I must say. So, and it might not be the worst idea ever. And we as, as PC gamers, we like gadgets anyway, so why not just add a controller to our selection of devices? Yeah, I just I, I've never really liked the fact that they made this game for a console and they can't figure out a good way to port it to the PC. So we have to accept having to buy a controller. Well, especially yeah, at least forcing people to give at least a good option for 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 keyboard and mouse. But a lot of games on console, what I do like is that you have the sensitivity of that stick where you can walk slowly, run a little bit faster, or run really fast. And you don't, you can't do that on a PC, except for maybe your shift, which will run between two modes or something like that. But that's it. Yeah. But actually, especially in like Assassin's Creed, that is pretty handy to have that kind of stuff. Yeah, it is, it is, indeed. Uh, I think what's actually bugs me the most in Assassin's Creed is just, well, part of that sometimes the way he looks and the way he tends to jump and stuff is not really, you know, aligned, right? But more, also just stuff like how you interact with the UI and all that stuff is just horrible because I'm playing with my hands placed on the WASD keys, uh, right? Because that's, of course, how any right-handed uh, person is playing. Hmm. And for some reason, I have to like play the back, uh, press the backspace and the enter key to make some, some of the UI yeah. interactions. Yeah. This whole thing where you can't use, you know, like the E key to press enter or the tap F, or escape key yeah, to go back and uh, stuff, it's retarded. It's weird. I it mean, takes, takes just a short time to just... It makes you almost feel that they haven't tested it with, the, with that at all. They just have a controller plugged into their... I don't, I don't think their, they have. No, they probably I, I, don't. I really don't think they made any proper user testing of it. Um, but, oh well. I, I'm still having a pretty good time in the game and there's a ton of things for me to do and I like that, so... Interesting point, controllers, while we're on the subject. Yeah. MMOs on console or with controller. A lot of people want Terrat for a controller, or is it already usable with a controller, actually? And, I mean, Guild Wars 2 has been talking about maybe going to consoles at some point. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online is still questionable, you know? What are, do you, what are you think saying, about that? Are you saying that players are asking for controls? Some people do, yeah. For controller interaction? Oh, yeah. Wow, there are I, people that do that. I would not have guessed that in <laughs> any way. Mm. But a lot uh, of, uh, there are a lot of people that wanted out coming out for consoles because they don't have the PC to play it. Yeah, okay, that, that that's a totally other thing that I, I But there are people that, that ask, ask for controller. Yeah, sure. MMOs are still kind of PC only, not entirely, but very much PC only. Uh, we have, have you tried a few games that were also on consoles? Mm -hmm. And to be honest, you could feel that in the control scheme already there that that was a problem. But, um, and and I think that's fine. But, well, I, I I wouldn't mind having that extra. But I just I don't like it when a perfectly good MMO is getting, you know, is ending up with a bad control scheme because they have to fit the console as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's hard to do as well because you know. You have the targeting system where you need to click people, and you have the, uh, you know, the whole UI that you need to move with your mouse is much more accessible with the mouse. And not to mention that you can yeah. just chat immediately and, and type at the same time, where you don't have to put down your controller and then start typing or something like that. I mean, you end up with something like DC Universe Online, which was all right to play, but the UI was horrible in every sense of the word, pretty yeah. much. 
Yeah. It's, I mean, to access the UI was horrible and stuff. Uh, the UI itself was, when you were playing, was all right. I'm a PC extremist, and I, I would, I, I want my keyboard and my mouse, and that's it. Maybe the occasional driving wheel for some fun, but uh, mm-hmm. that's a whole different matter. Um, let's move on to our first news. <laughs> yeah. Rift. First expansion, Storm Legion, includes full original game. Interesting. Yes, indeed. That was, uh, I think that was a uh, very new news uh, I just heard, and that's very interesting. I love the idea. Why, why? I mean, some some games seem to think of expansions as a way to separate your player base into two groups. Yeah. And I don't, it's, I don't get it. I mean, I understand it if it's like a free-to-play game because one of their main sources of income would probably be expansions. So in that way, it probably makes sense. But in a subscription-based game like Rift, mm-hmm. why, in God's name, I, I'm I'm pretty convinced that it will be more profitable for the company to just give this expansion to people, right? Mm-hmm. And say, here you go. You still have to play the the subscription, but you're getting this expansion for free, so you're getting a lot of new content. A lot of new content for people will keep them playing in, instead. Expansion is going to be kind of like this point where, nah, I'm not going to keep playing. No, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to... It's, a, it's pa- a, blo- a blockade in, in like, or a milestone for people to like stop playing or... Yeah, exactly. Playing. And yeah. especially because a lot of a lot of people may have stopped playing up until that point. Because, um, you know, when, when you're in this uh, period like World of Warcraft is in right now, up until a new expansion, there isn't a whole lot to do. And so a lot of people is quitting there. If they got the game for free, then I'm pretty sure they are much more likely to go back and give it a try. And financially speaking, do you think Blizzard could afford giving out expansion for free? Of course they can. I'm yeah. I'm almost 100% sure that they can do that. I don't even know why they even ask any money anymore. If it's just for like, I don't know, to show your support or something like that, or... I, I think know. I think it's just I think it's pretty much just you know old habits die hard. Old habits, yeah, yeah. Um, because I'm not sure I see the reason for it anymore. Is the most of the the main source of the income will still be the subscriptions, and that I think that's by a pretty huge margin actually. Yeah. And also, it it has this another another thing about it is that it it means that new players will have a hell of a lot easier, you know, catching up. Because instead of you having to buy like three expansion packs before you can actually get up into the game, you buy one, and you are you can now play with your friends, so you can now play on equal footing as everyone else. Yeah. And that's I also think is very uh, is very important. One yeah. thing to note, by the way, about the whole Rift thing is that if you already got already have a Rift account or own Rift, then you'll get the expansion uh, cheaper. You'll get I, I'm not sure how much cheaper because I don't know how much it'll cost. Yeah. But you'll you'll get it, uh, you'll get some um, some discount on it, which is of course important, I think. But yeah, indeed, which is uh, makes sense. But I think it's a it's a really good idea because there isn't much reason to play an MMO that has moved on, you know. Mm-hmm. To to play World of Warcraft at level eighty isn't that amazing when things are now focused on the level eighty five content. Exactly. So I don't even see why you want to give people the the chance to only play that expansion because you'll still be having the same game system and be influenced by the same patches as as the guys who are having a cataclysm, which means that any change to your to your power will still you know influence you, and that means that the game may not even be balanced. The game won't be balanced around you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, that was enough about that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, another uh, rift, and you know, to talk a little bit more about the expansion thing. Uh, Guild Wars 2 makes a lot of sense if they do ask money for their expansion because they're a free-to-play game. So mm-hmm. I think they, 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 a lot of their money used from expansion, uh, a lot of hard work went into that, so they need that money to kind of keep on track, I, I suppose. I don't know. It all yeah. depends on how much money they make off the, the store, of course. But Of course it does. But, but yeah, it's, but, it's but also I really, a lot more legitimate, right? Yeah. But I do hope that they, they the packaging of like New and old game that should stay like buy them together, and games have actually done it in the past already. I remember this uh, 
I bought this version of World of Warcraft that had Burning Crusade and the old version in like one box. And mm, yeah, exactly. They, they've done it a little bit, but I don't see why they don't go all out on it. I mean, they, they'll probably lose some money by doing it, but on the other hand... And it's, it's, it's also good marketing because it's like, it's like, oh, check out this new expansion for this game. Uh, if you buy it, you will get the old game free to show you can start playing with friends immediately, and it will be like, people, ooh, I was never really interested in this, in this game, but this expansion looks really cool. I'll just mm -hmm. buy it, and without having to go through the hassle of buying every other expansion. Yeah, 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 exactly. And of course, Guild Wars 2 may end up in the same situation, though. If they have multiple expansions, then people have to buy multiple titles, and that's... It's always a very steep price if you're getting in late into, you know, a game's life cycle, where mm -hmm. there is multiple expansions, and you're like, oh, so I, I'm going to level through this, and that won't take too long. Then I'll have to buy this next one because I, I mean to catch up, uh, which may be a problem. It may not. It it totally depends on how much they'll be available, how much of the end game, if you will, they'll still be available to new players. Because stuff like the World was World, if that's still available to players with the with the base game, then that should probably help. Yeah. Uh, so because you can still play with friends and stuff. But yeah. yeah. So Rift is also releasing the three faction conquest mode next week. Yeah, the uh, 1.9 patch. Interesting. Swotar kind of did it as well with one of their PvP things, where it's like three groups of people versus each other, I think, which is nah, not exactly like it. Uh, I mean, Guild Wars 2 obviously has it, with like server versus server versus server. Uh, and a lot more games, the Elder Scrolls Online is going to do it as well, so it's going to be mm -hmm. interesting to see how that works out for Rift. Especially since that game already has two factions, and uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm not even yeah. sure how it's gonna how it's gonna work out with a third faction. It sounds very interesting, but I guess you're just gonna be mixed up with the other faction or what? Yeah, I guess. In, in all the teams, or it's, I think it's gonna be server for server or something like that. Then oh, well, that could work too. Yeah, that would make but the most is, sense because it would be kind of weird if you're suddenly working together with the opposite faction. Yeah, that, that was kind of what I'm getting at. I mean, if you have factions, it's quite normal that you want to keep those factions very, very separate. So there's at least this feeling of us and, and them, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's cool. I, I, I generally like very, very the whole... Popular. Yeah, I, I like the whole uh, three-faction uh, PvP thing. I mean, you, you're kind of getting the... I was about to say rock, paper, scissor effect. I'm not sure if that's the right term for it, but, you know, people can cannot always speed around on each other uh, instead of so to balance each other out. We've been touching upon this multiple times in this in this podcast. So. Oh, God damn it. There's a bee in my life. <laughs> I, hate, I hate bees. Yeah, same here. Especially mostly because they, they're so noisy, right? So you can just... They, you're always like, it's there, and it, is it going to do something about me? Is it... If it stays still, then it's fine. I think it's still now. Good. <laughs> I'll chase it away afterwards. But yeah, it seems to be interesting. It makes sense because it adds diversity to your gameplay mm -hmm. and the randomness more like if one faction is dominating, the other two could maybe work together to get him out. And yeah. and, and I think the other, any MMO should be based on that kind of model, I think. Especially PvP is uh, great that way. It, yeah, at least it makes the basic for some Imagine, PvP imagine Ra Rathi Bessin or uh, Warsham Goats with three factions. That would be fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would. Then you really need to have the tactic of like people staying in the... You know, you need to work together a lot more than it is now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And you probably wouldn't end up in a situation where one team is dominating everything and you're just getting ganged in your base, you know. So. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Oh... oh. Um, yes. Let's mention some more. To, uh, shout out to this wonderful site um, on which we are actually mentioned somewhere here. <laughs> Yay! Um, yeah, some more pictures here. Mostly focused on uh, Ascalon. It is ridiculous every time to see yet again how amazing. Okay, load the picture, please. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at admittedly, at Guild Wars 1 doesn't look too bad given how old it is, but Guild Wars 2 really, really... I mean, the added amount of details is just amazing. It's its the tessellation, mostly, and, and also just the graphics different, like the art style difference. It's just yeah. huge. 
Yeah, the, the extra details there. The textures are very nice. Yeah. A lot better textures and shadows. Um, also, the top the top picture is kind of crazy. Well, there once was some kind of light tower, and now there's a volcano. Oh, right. Yeah. The gear design is pretty much the same still, though. That's interesting to see, like the gear choices. Mm -hmm, yeah, very true. Uh, but all, always worth a look, some of those pictures. Indeed. Very cool. Um, then we move on to... The stress, stress test. test yeah. Which is stressful. As it, as the word would imply. But, yeah. Uh, next Wednesday, or this coming Wednesday, I should say, proper English, uh, June 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. PDT. Which will be... <sighs> Do the time zone math, Ozzy. Wait, a.m. is in the morning, right? Yeah, it is. So... Plus eight, we need to have, which will be eighteen six o'clock, seven six six or seven o'clock. I think it's seven o'clock because we're in GMT plus two right now. Yeah, it's seven o'clock in the evening for us European douchebags, which is perfect for us. We're in the evening and, and America gets yeah, yeah, screwed yeah. like during the I day. Mean, it was <laughs> I, I saw some people, I think, I don't know if they were complaining or they were just asking, you know, Guild Wars 2 on Twitter, if, uh, what, you know, why why they selected that time, and they were like, well, we have a lot of fans outside the US, you know, and... Yeah, see, so people it, tend to forget that a lot as well, yeah. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be, it's going to be prime time for Europe this time, right? It's going to be great, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm just having, Sorry, that's I'm a quote a, from Winnie the Pooh movie. I'm having a bloody exam the next day, let's just... <gasps> You better get ready the day before then. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I I am working towards that goal of how I, I being think ready on the Tuesday. I think I'm gonna go do some conquest PvP. Yeah, that sounds not fun. Because that's something as well. Like you don't have to spend a lot of time, and you can just hop in and out, and you don't feel like you miss out on something. Mhm. Mm we didn't do that. We didn't get to do that at all, actually. In the no. In the bit. Oh, we never got. We always end it. up having less time that we hope we would have. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'll try a new character, to be honest. Yeah, maybe that too. I would like to try uh, mesmer. My my girlfriend tried to mesmer, and she actually really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, exactly. So give give him that shot. Yeah. Because it's exactly cool. because it's it's one of those classes or professions that has never really been in, in any MMO before. Well, except for Guild Wars One, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the same way the engineer then, really, but <clears throat> and then perhaps some Wobbles World. Yeah, that should be fun. Who knows? Hopefully, we can you know? finally get into that fucking eternal battleground. Oh yeah, we should probably we should just actually no matter how how busy I am for that exam, I'm gonna log on the moment the server opens up. Sign up for that. Go shit. over there, sign up for it, and just I'll just be reading while waiting, right? So, <laughs> so um. Our next blog post, or it's not really a blog post, a Facebook post, uh, they posted some pictures of their office with some interesting quotes next to it or like uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a quite a big team, but their office, uh, they had the infamous shirts right there where people had this conspiracy that that would be the release date. I don't know if you read that. Oh no, I didn't hear that. <laughs> like this six twenty eight twelve. People thought it would be <laughs> yeah. twenty eight. Oh, that's kind of funny actually. They've already debunked that, but mm -hmm. now there's this new conspiracy going on because they have more shirts this, and then people are like, ooh, on this day, they will announce the release date at fourteen thirty. Which is just ridiculous. Oh, that would be. It would be kind of cool if they actually did it. I love it. it up if when developers have these small. You know, hints and Vail is insanely good at you know playing with their community like that. It's very fun actually. But the office looks like uh, I don't know, a very nice place to work in. Uh, very relaxed. A lot mm -hmm. of facilities to like just hang out and. Yeah, I wanna. Uh, I, I wanna work in a place like that. I love yeah. how all the desks is you know very customized Nerf, or Nerf very personal. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people working on these traditional. Screen size monitor. I don't know what that the fuck is that about, but that's well, interesting. What? Like it's not a widescreen. It's their normal. No, I, I don't. I, I 
I don't know. I think it may be something they put up to, you know, blog out whatever they were working on, but I'm not sure. You know, to just if there if there was anything of value of those on those screens that they didn't want people to see. No, I mean they they're they're not white screens. Some of them are working on traditional size screens. Oh, like that? I like thought these, you made. See? Yeah, I thought you meant like the white background on the screen. I was thinking that might be like kind of a protective measure so people couldn't see what they were working on. But yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, good idea. That's. <laughs> Well, these are, Q, these are QA okay. testers, so they're pretty much reading all day, I guess, so that makes a little bit of sense, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that's true enough. I don't know why. Perhaps it's just because they want so many screens on their computers. But yeah, that could be. At desks. Oh, God. But I really love the view from the office. Yeah. Some of those lucky guys I, sit I want, the window. I want that painting. Or that, that screen. That, oh, that but yeah, uh, go check it out on Facebook. Uh, if you haven't liked their page yet, then you should so now. Interesting. You're also mostly getting a little story about who the guys is and uh, and what they are, what they're like doing and working on and stuff. Yeah. Then uh, this is sorry. I'm moving no, on. Gonna, I, I am. I am. Uh, then uh, there is okay. this post we found on PCGamer.com, which is not like news or anything, but this guy just talks about. Um, post-launch content and getting the community to play together. That's what the, the thing reads, at least. And uh, it's a very interesting read. It's it's yeah. I think uh, if this is the article that I think, I, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I just got sidetracked there because this is the article. <laughs> I thought it was the other article, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, this article is generally just uh, well reminding us that they are going to continue to have a lot of uh, post-launch support of the game. They the live, will, that live team they mentioned as well again, I think, here. Yeah, exactly. They are going to continue adding dynamic events to the game. And not, like, not in the sense where they are taking out other dynamic events and putting new dynamic events in so they have like a dynamic dynamic event system. No. <laughs> they, they are going to add, just keep adding dynamic events and then just give you less less of a chance to, you know, um, come across each individual event. So it should basically mean that there will be a lot more replayability. Especially if you're like, you level through some specific area on a character, and then when you get the, there again, they have added new events that you haven't tried before, and, you know. So so I think that's a very interesting way to do it, actually. Even though it, it's not, it's not in-game per se, but it's... Um, yeah, it's um interesting read nonetheless. Yeah. And it's, and and, and I, li I like the system and I think it's a great way to generally make the world, you know, keep the world fresh. Exactly. People. Exactly. It's just, it's, all, it's all about uh you know, they they actually talk about in this next post here what we're talking about, but they talk about that uh it's very important to keep the whole game fun rather than the content patches coming out after that every time. So it's it's a, it stays a fun experience from start to beginning, all the way, no matter when you go back, rather than play it once and not want to do it again. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I just see you <laughs> with your finger and you know on my screen, but people can't see that. Oh. But <laughs> no, I know. I just oh I should have put uh, the screen on that would have been embarrassing for you <laughs> picking your nose on the internet but yeah this uh, next uh, part uh, is it fun uh, Arena posted this on their site very interesting to read mm -hmm. again I said a lot but anything Guild Wars related is <laughs> interesting yeah. to read so no, that, that one is actually especially interesting, if anything, because it's it's a lot. At least for me, I, I kind of like to read about uh, game design and you know thoughts that are going into the whole design process. Uh, yeah. And that is really a blog post about <laughs> that particular topic. And especially people that are skeptic towards free to play and stuff like that should definitely read this article. I think. Because it has a lot of good points in uh, the difference between pay-to-play and free-to-play, and how it will affect their game design. 
because a lot of people, including myself a few years back, thought that free to game free to play basically means shit and honestly ninety percent of the games that are free to play are still shit out there anyway. Um except for the games like Lord of the Rings Online and Dungeons and Dragons Online that actually have a good system in place. And Guild Wars one for example. Yeah, exactly. Guild Wars One was uh, Guild Wars One is, is is exceptional on that part. That's launched as free to play right off the bat, right? It's all about making a game that is entirely available when you buy the game once and then free to play. And things that you buy have to be either fun stuff or small little things that maybe increase your character for a little bit, but not significantly enough to win your battles for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Guild Wars One didn't launch with a with a microtransaction, did it? No. I think no. it was out of the later, as far as I remember, but it didn't launch with it. Yeah, yeah, but they they even had a, a more different design because that was really not an MMO because everything was instance except for the world. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true enough. It's kind of a <laughs> very interesting design in that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's uh, touch a bit upon, upon these subjects that uh, they talk about here. So, fun impacts loot collection. So they talk about uh, the rarest item in game uh, are not more powerful than others. So you don't need them to be the best. We actually talked about this post show and uh, or before the show. I was yeah, pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> pre-show. Um, um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, and it's true. An item that is more powerful doesn't necessarily have to be be the best. <laughs> I don't know why I worded that that weirdly, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the the interesting way they're going about it is that yeah, they don't they don't want their game to be a grind because that's grind is a way to keep players playing the game. Uh, and that's kind of the way you're going to do it in a subscription model, but they don't want to do it like that. They want the game to be fun, because if the game is fun, then people is probably more likely to put money in their uh, store, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they have this, they have all these examples of how they are, they are, you know, introducing fun into the game. And yeah, as you say, one of them is loot collection, and and the main difference here is that they they don't put that much. Um, Stats isn't as important. In no, what what makes gear significant is the look of it and yeah. the, the pride of getting that and looking awesome, rather than getting those stats, getting the item just because you need the stats to progress into the next tier of dungeon or raiding or content, exactly. whatever content you're doing. Yeah, exactly. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't, gear shouldn't necessarily be a big, um, you know, block for you. Mm-hmm. That you that you have to uh, and a huge time sink for you. It should only be something you're going for if you want to have a certain look, and that that look should then indicate that you have achieved something, accomplished something, whatever. Um, and yeah, I, I think they answer something, and I actually think that I totally agree with that. Yeah, that that has always been the case in MMOs. I think that well, no. It's true enough that in, in pretty much any MMO you need stats with better gear, <laughs> gear with better stats on it, mm-hmm. um, in order to progress. But when you've been hanging around in the city with your fancy gear on, people mm-hmm. have not been people is, isn't really you know drolling over your gear because of the stats they're having. The, so the next part uh, of their blog post uh, talks about, or the next point in their blog post talks about fun impact decisions. Um, every time you finish a dungeon, you get tokens you can trade in for reward items that you want, rather than having small chance of getting a drop because it's more fun to always get reward. Blah blah blah. Yes, mm-hmm. and pretty much every MMO does this these days, and that is a good change. Even though I loved in Vanilla WoW that. It took me forever to get my gear, and it got a huge chance of completion when I actually got it. It was way too yeah. random, it took way too much time, and this system has much more pros than than cons against that old system. So, yeah. I, I agree, and yeah, it is, it is a way we are seeing, well, we are seeing uh, more games going this direction. 
or well, World of Warcraft have this buy, <laughs> you know, dual system where you're both getting loot and you're being certain to get some some points that you can spend later on. Um, but I'm not I'm not totally sure we are quite there yet. I mean. I agree that it is more fun to just say, okay, I'm getting something out of this instead of having this, okay, I may be getting something out of this. And then, you know, spending two hours in a dungeon and you're not getting anything, that's just horrible. Mm -hmm. But I'm still not sure we really are there yet because with this system, you're getting, you're sure you're going to get those points, yeah, but it just kind of turns the whole thing into a kind of a grind, to be honest, where you're just doing it for the points. Yeah. That's true. You know, because then, okay, I'm doing this dungeon for get to getting some more points, and I won't be I won't be able to to buy the item yet. I'll have to do two more dungeons. So it's just kind of getting this. It's steady progression, but I wouldn't say it is it is as fun as getting your item as a random drop. But I, I, I guess it's it's it they have both in place. I guess because you can still. Uh gain items from the instance itself. I mean, I've seen things drop and stuff like that, so... It's it's, it's finding a good balance. And while, especially like when first a new expansion comes out, that balance is pretty good because the epics in, 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 the, in the dungeons are good enough to be on par with the things you get from the vendor. Uh, so that says that, that does work in that regard, but yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, more it's still more of a grind because you know exactly what instance you need to hit to over what piece of gear. So yeah, the element of randomness is a bit gone, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, that that that's kind of the thing. I mean, that when you get the points, that's just getting the goal in itself, and you can just go buy the gear, and then it's all it's all so lovely and organized. I think that's having everything being so well organized isn't necessarily a good thing in a game like this. No. Um, I mean, you're, you're kind of losing the, the randomness or whatever of, of, the, whole, of the whole game world. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we talked a bit, I don't know if we talked about it last week or if we talked about it off, off the podcast, but this idea where instead of getting loot, instead of getting whole items, you were getting like item scraps that you could use for some kind of crafting system or trading system or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so there would be a whole other layer afterwards. You'd be sure to get some reward, and that reward could in some way be crafted or traded or whatever into the, the real gear, into the real reward. Uh, so there'll be a, a whole other system lying beyond the dungeon where you're, you're going there to get some stuff that enables you to do other stuff that should then be fun in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure if I agree that it's a major point with the, the one they're making. I think it's I think it's a good idea, definitely, to have this, this uh, and, point uh, and, and a karma, a karma, karma system is... Well, the tokens are different from the karma, I guess, from dungeons. But the, the karma system is also great because it translates to everything that you do in game. So it that feels uh it feels good to have that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree that that's also that's a fine thing. I mean it, it also kinda cool that you participate in dynam dynamic events and you get these camera points and then you you know later you are you are getting a renowned heart and you check out the vendor and oh I, I could actually need that upgrade, you know, and then you can buy it because you participate in these events. That's that's actually cool. Um, but I still think developers have to be careful not to make too much, too many point system like that, yeah. because it it just removes something from the world. It just becomes like a spreadsheet rather than playing a game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You can you can plan everything. Uh, uh, the next point is uh, fun impacts development, uh, which states explorable dungeons have multiple paths for you. you can take control, uh, you can take and random events. Uh, so you will have random events happening in dungeons. Uh, how much there are and how how random they will be, or how often they will happen, is another question. Um, because of this, because of this, you don't feel like you need to play the same dungeons over and over again. If you blah blah blah, yeah. So it just keeps it fresh. That's what they're talking about, and that's a good design. I like the fact that they have this dungeon in several modes, but in every mode you do a different part of the dungeon and random stuff can happen. I think that's brilliant. That's something that I really want, wanted from dungeons, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I agree. Uh, dungeon, 
it's a problem when dungeons are just something you're going in and you're blazing through them and you know exactly what's going to happen and you're just you only go into the dungeon to see the end boss you know and you know everything there that's nothing new no. i think if if you're getting some random elements in between it will at least keep the content feeling fresher for a longer time if that's yeah. enough of, it, of course exactly uh, hopefully they don't have specific items tied to specific bosses because then we can just end up in this whole situation oh damn it we we, we went left there and i needed something on the that's not left that's right we mm -hmm. went right there, and I needed something on the left, and now I'm just going to leave this and rage quit and everything because I, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But but yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea that dungeons shouldn't be static. No, definitely not. Uh, and that's good, and I can't wait to try that stuff out on myself. Then the next, uh, the fourth point is fun impacts customization, which states the events and personal story systems allow you to get a sense of customization from your characters. Playing through the game, each character can experience completely different content and the world can always stay fresh and pursuit of new storylines and if ever changing dynamic event and world. Uh, yeah, so they're just talking about that the game should stay fresh all the time rather than it being a static world and you make one character, he goes to quests and that's it. And then you make the next character and maybe your starting quests are a bit different but then you end up in the same areas as before and you only go to X quest and X quest because you know it's the fastest way to level and you just do it like that and it's very repetitive. Whereas here, uh, dynamic events will be different and like they said, they have a life team so they'll have new events built in and you'll have the personal story which is very different from whatever you choose to be. Uh, yeah. The next point is uh, fun and impacts and customization. Uh, they talk about the sense of uh, your personal story and customization of your character and dynamic events and how that will constantly change and is different de and depending on what you choose and you know the decisions that you make and how that will stay fresh the entire game and also when you make new characters that you know that experience will be pretty unique every time. You, you do uh, that that old area, and uh, I think this is one of the strongest parts of Guild Wars 2 that they have that because a lot of generic MMOs, as I tend to call them, static ones. You know, you go through it once and you've seen the quests, and you, every time you level again, you go through the same quest sets, and uh, you know you don't have reason to go back to those areas either because the quests are done. There's nothing happening there anymore. So. I think it's brilliant that uh, that they have this, this kind of system. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's so true. This is probably the the point, I guess, where where I think that that Guild Wars 2 is somewhat separating itself from other, at least, subscription-based MMOs because they're saying we are going to add, you know, dynamic events and content to the game at all all zones, all level ranges, right? Mm -hmm. So the game, well, partly, of course, you can go back with your main character and experience some zones you've already been in, but I think the major impact will be when you're starting a new character. And you're going out there and you're seeing a world that was definitely not how it was, you know. You're really going to see new things, and that means that the exploration aspect will still be be strong in the game, even when you are creating new character. And as we talked about a couple of episodes ago, exploration is really one of the major ways to create immersion. Exactly. Totally. Uh, yeah, so I think this that that is great. It's great that they want to do not just say we're just gonna focus exactly and only on this uh, on on the end game. Mm -hmm. I, I'm totally down with that point. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, indeed. Um, I guess that's that. I mean, customization, uh, the fun impacts that. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and then the last part is fun impacts gameplay. Uh, the pursuit in content uh, led us to make many gameplay decisions including everyone who helps kill a creature gets experience and loot this is an MMO fucking brilliant everyone should adapt that good so you're not c competing with other players everyone gets rewarded for events with karma they can spend to buy rewards they want rather than get random roll and stuff they might not want content skills in difficulty, so 
if more people show up, the stuff you do will be harder and everyone's able to revive each other. Basically, they just talk about, you know, how to make this game more a corporation rather than a single player yeah. experience. Which <laughs> how they're able to make it an, an MMO, right? I mean, yeah, a lot of, you know, uh, there's this video that I'll link in the description. Uh, this guy, the top 10 reasons to be interested in Guild Wars 2. Uh, Alex Ridiculous is his name. And he has one thing that, you know, it's based on group playing. And he shows this clip of World of Warcraft where he's casting towards the mob and it's flying towards the mob and that other guy charges in and tags the mob, as it's called, and gets yeah. the loot. And that's what happens all the time. And then it, it forces people to go to remoter areas of, of places to go away from people so they can be on their own and be left alone. And that's a horrible design choice right there for an MMORPG. Yeah. I mean, of course, you, you are... If you're in a group, you'll still share the loot. I mean, there's World of Warcraft I'm talking about, right? Mm. And that is fine. But I think what they've done so beautifully in Guild Wars 2 is just... Yeah, you don't have to go through all this effort. It's just so... It's just happening automatically. No more rolling, no, no more shit. And, you know, you get to the trading part as well, because in a dungeon or something, what if two people get a queen and, like, ooh, I just dropped, you want one? It? Yeah, sure, I got this, I need, you know. Community works like that as well. It's yeah, you're, you're not competing against items no. like that. Oh, no. I, we all need this item. Oh, my God, only one can get it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, that that is also one of the big ones, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, to To really... To yeah, to re really improve the the experience for everyone and make it make it a true MMO where people are are fighting side by side instead of you know fighting in <laughs> instead of going through the content in a line because it's all every next step is mutual exclusive and you can't go you know you can't only one guy can get through it at a time and all that stuff so yeah yes that's that's kind of feels so good. and it feels so good you know exactly when you're just running around with with other players like that I it's yeah. Indeed, indeed, it just works. Yeah, you you don't really notice it like until you start playing a game like World of Warcraft or Rift or whatever again, where it's it's individual based and you notice it mm -hmm. immediately. Like it, it's so naturally to do that, it makes so much sense that you work to get you work together to kill something, and you get both get XP, you both get loot, and it makes sense. Why not? I, I think one of the most interesting things, if you know that that I'm experiencing personally. Is so in Guild Wars 2, I see some players that are fighting the same area as me. I'm running over to them because we can help each other, and you know, if if shit hits the fan, we have a big, bigger chance if we are together in a group. In World of Warcraft, if I see another player, I am I am moving in the opposite direction of him to get to the other side of that you know mob area. I'm we are in, if we're both fighting all the same mobs, we are trying to stick to two different sides of the area to not interfere with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that, that that mindset is just so so different. Yeah, it is. Uh, and so this Halo whole article is pretty much like based around uh, it being free to play, right? So they have a quote here: "What if your business model isn't based on subscription? What if your content design motivations aren't driven by the need to create mechanics that keep people playing exactly. as long as possible?" And th that's pretty much what this this whole article is based around. They talk about how free to play or their version of free to play helps them design the game that they want and also the people want because they're making a game that is fun and not just fun from patch to patch, but fun as an entire entire game constantly. So even if you go back to old content, it still feels fresh and relatively new and if you make a new character that your personal story will be different and you will find new dynamic events because they shift those in and stuff like that so they have a lot more time and less pressure because they don't get paid monthly from the players to make the content that they want and make it in a quality that they want feel they feel comfortable with rather than being pushed by players who pay a monthly fee and mm -hmm. that it, it it makes a lot of sense what what they're writing. The, the great question, well, of course, well, one of the <laughs> the questions is of course that they they still need to, you know, make players stick around somehow. Sure. Uh, and that's, a, I mean, I, I think as far as I can tell, they've done a pretty amazing job making the game very alt friendly. Yeah. 
uh, for several reasons. You know, you can start a new alt, and you can still you can still for the most part play with your other friends. You know, you can just team up. They can come back to an area with their mains if they if they don't want to start an alt. They can and they can actually get the same challenge that you were having by going back to that area, and they can perhaps see some new dynamic events coming. That's great. Yeah. Uh, you can join them in Wolf as well. That's still great. Yeah. Um, but the, but they really need to make sh- to you know keep people playing the game because otherwise they still won't make any money. Hmm. Um, I think I think an important thing to say there is that they also talked about it. I think in this in this uh, part is keeping content a secret, uh, meaning that they're not going to release patch notes every time they add a new dynamic event uh, mm-hmm, or yeah. a public test drum, and they can do this live. Remember, they can at these dynamic events whenever they feel like it. So suddenly you are helping a friend out in a low level area and it's like this event blah blah hey what the fuck? I've never seen this before in my life. That's awesome. And then you maybe talk about it on the forum and then people are like, ooh, that's cool and then they want to go check it out rather than, ooh, next patch notes like two months in advance. Oh this is gonna be happening and then yeah, yeah. it's gonna be ha- in, on PDR soon so to check it out. And it's it's especially while we've gotten into this weird weird situation where the game completely got away from that kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree. Exploration is going to be one of the major things. Mm. Uh, the only, I mean, so so imagine it's going to be like that, that okay, uh, they're going to release these uh, new dynamic events and people are going to discover them, then they're going to be posted on the forum and you're going to have a flood of player like traveling around the world to these dynamic events that have just suddenly popped up. Mm-hmm. I could I could potentially see that being a problem unless you know there's going to be enough of them incoming or they're just not going to be rewarding rewarding players for participating in them um, because we've already seen in beta how how the system kind of breaks down a bit if there's too many players yeah. because the dynamic events doesn't really get to play out in their full in their full length again though sorry go on I see you want to say something um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so I'm just saying that to uh, they probably want to keep players from actually doing this thing where they're just go going around the world to getting into new events, and that 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 would probably mean that the events can't be the only thing there is to do, you know, for for end game players. No, but they're they're gonna be dungeons, and how long can you play those dungeons? Yeah. That's for sh- that's a good question. I mean, you have eight times three versions of of dungeons, that's true, which is quite you, a lot. You, you have, but you have seen how that has worked out for World of Warcraft. It's not very engaging to go into a dungeon that's the same as the one you've been in already. No, even if but it's more they will difficult. have they have random events, and they are all a little bit different that's true. from each other. Yeah. So. I think it just boils down to that. I'm not sure if. If adding more dynamic events is going to help a whole lot for the end game, whereas I think it will help a whole lot for the replayability uh, with new characters. Yes, sure. It all depends on how how what, how big they can make these dynamic events because they talk about these minimal of ten players dynamic events, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we've seen half of what they can do. I mean, all these dragons and stuff that are coming down. I remember from seeing on this game show floor show. Uh, that they showed this dragon event where you like you had like multiple stages and multiple things to do. You like you could either just go in and attack him, or you could like help rebuild these cannons to hit the wall in front of the dragon, and then or kite these mobs that were coming at you and kill them. And yeah. it seems pretty cool the stuff that they can do because they have all these mechanics built in where you can pick up environmental weapons, you can make siege items, and and yeah, you can build you stuff, know. and uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it all depends on how deep that's going to be and how interesting and how well that works yeah definitely and I'd still say I, I'm not sure how much end game content there is yet uh, no. and how, how deep that goes I'm that that's one of the things I'm actually really excited about how, or nervous about if you will but I think we're looking at end game content for a game like this th- wrong because we are so used end game content means raiding and yeah, and, and yeah it's true. this game is all about more logging into the game and doing something you really want for a couple of hours being dynamic events mm-hmm. being a dungeon and it's just a whole different de- de- design philosophy around it I guess yeah it might be true I mean it's 
It's very possible. I <laughs> I've never tried to play a game that kind of has this uh, that that are going about things this way. So. Nah. And you have to remember that. Work. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I'm. I'm just no. I'm just really thinking that perhaps it'll work, but I'm. I'm afraid if if they can keep people playing without having this this goal. If you don't, if you're not really working toward toward a specific goal, how are they going to keep people playing? And that that's that's actually the thing that I'm really you know interested in to see how how they're going. One thing it. I can think of is like make these massive dynamic events that are linked together in the world. Like if one of the or elder dragons is like threatening a part or something like that. Make all these dynamic events in areas help towards either like making him retreat or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you know yeah, that could work. Yeah, and then, and then work together in some way to to end up in this big event in the end or something like that. I don't know. There's so much we haven't seen and we don't know what they're capable of of doing. So yeah, exactly. I, and we are also getting. Uh, go on, go you on. also have to remember that it was a beta weekend event, and other people were running around. And when you are a few months into a game's release, a lot of people will not be on at the same time, and a lot of people will be doing different things. They will be spread out in areas. They will do dungeons. A lot of people will be stuck in dungeons. A lot of people will be stuck in world free world. A lot of people will do structured PvP or just hang around crafting in the city, and mm -hmm. it will be a lot more spread out. Whereas now it's like this focused group on like, ooh, this area is available. <laughs> All the, yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. mass yeah. moves to the next area, and that's true. And I also agree that the, the Guild Wars 2 isn't nearly as focused on getting to max level as, all, as a lot of other games is. Uh, it's all about experiencing game constantly, whenever level level is merely, exactly. merely, and, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just being a game where where playing different characters is the main goal, you know. Yeah. Um, and and that might even work. I mean, that if if things are, I I mean, uh, I think I remember that achievement and stuff is bound to your account, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe everything is just going towards this getting an awesome account while not necessarily having an awesome character. So so it, so really coming down to you know playing what you want to play, even playing other characters, because it will still go towards your account as as what you're working towards, right? Yeah, to that, that's, that's account. true. Uh, so that might work, but we are getting way sidetracked here. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it's it's all about. It basically comes down to that because it's free to play, it, it uh, releases a lot of pressure from game designers like Blizzard that have to work with twelve, ten million people that play pay a monthly fee, yeah. and they have they are forced to bring out content every so often in a patch form. Uh, yeah. And, the, and and people expect a certain kind of They expect a new raid instance and new dungeons and a new season of PvP or or whatever. So exactly, I think that's the main problem. That they players have kind of painted themselves into this corner where they have to release major patches that has everything. They can't just release minor patches that has something. You know, and then they've released like this this island of fun, and then they get mass QQ because there's no raid instance or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of sad. Whereas Guild Wars 2 will be. They'll be adding all these dynamic events live, and then they'll probably have like patches, and then maybe they'll add, add like a new dungeon or whatever, and it's gonna be a lot more a natural flow of content, I think, rather than hopefully. I hopefully, hopefully, I would so yeah. much prefer that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyways, I'll just quickly go through the last of this uh, article, and then I think I have a question for you. Uh oh. Maybe actually a couple of questions. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. So so this. Basically, it, it tries to, um, uh, you know, they're, they're um, why, why can't I remember this word now? Okay, so people working in the QA department, uh, quality assurance department of ArenaNet, is in comparison, at least from their point of view, in comparison to other QA departments, they have this very important job of making sure that the content is fun. They don't just have to make sure that, that things are working. They actually, they are allowed to come with feedback on, how fun was this for you? Yeah. Did you have a good time? Yeah. And that means that the QA department is very much getting like part, partly game designers. Yeah. And they're saying that a lot of their current game designers actually got in from the QA department because they invite people to this participate. Guy, this guy actually was one of those people, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Colin uh, Johnson. 
I mean that 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 that's actually very fun, very interesting that they are putting so much weight on that department because it can easily end up just being those guys that find bugs, right? Instead of being those guys that actually you know get their hands on this content and can tell us about it. And it, and it all comes back to the whole iterative like game design where, and also, good ideas don't come from one person or a group of people. Anyone can can play a game can come up with something really cool and I find it really cool that their different departments often like discuss things with each other and then like hey maybe that is a good idea and yeah let's go with that instead of what I was thinking mm -hmm. you have to be in insanely open yeah, yeah. So, as a game designer but it, it seems like that's the model they're going with that arena and that's awesome that's really good uh, so but that also means that they're relying so much on feedback not just from their QA department but also from us the players. Yes. And we all, okay, everyone who has participated in the beta, uh, beta vegans have seen these small boxes coming up when you have completed something that's saying, was this fun for you or uh, how much of an impact did it have and all that. It actually means it is very important for them to get yeah, this feedback. It is, it is, because they go through it. They actually go through it. Yeah, yeah they do. They can see, okay, how, we have this particular event. How many people have said that was fun and, and how is that? Okay, so if, if people... Is the, is, you know, if there's a lot of guys um, voting perhaps three and above, I don't, I don't know the, the exact numbers. I'm just making them up. If a lot of people is voting three and above, then perhaps it's okay. But if a lot of people is like, yeah, below three, then maybe we have to go back and make some changes to it. Or, you know, if, yeah. if a lot of people doesn't felt like it has a big enough, they had a big enough impact on the world, then perhaps they have to change that or I, I make think, it more obvious. I actually think Arena has been one of the developers that really has been the closest to their community from a lot of other games that I've seen, uh, especially like Star Wars, have been pretty distant with their community, mm -hmm. and 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 you know Blizzard is pretty pretty close, but they still tend to do their own thing, really. Uh, whereas here, I mean, you saw the difference between beta weekend events, and this is just beta. I mean, you don't know how it's going to be on live if they're still going to be that active with us, but hopefully that'll be the case because they they do listen to the good feedback and take a lot of things into consideration. That's, I think uh, what, I, what I really liked doing the beta again was seeing uh, a lot of different developers was jumping into the forums. It yeah. wasn't just the community managers or anything like that. We had a lot of developers coming there too, and they had this big AMA and uh, uh, on Reddit as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think that re that really brings that developers somewhat closer to the community, and that's that's great. They understand that a game is not about the design that they have in their head, it's, but it's about how well it works. You know, in real life, and yeah. and or not in real life, but in the game, and and how gamers react to that, because that's why they make the game, right? For us, they 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 make it for us, so it only makes sense that they do that. And I mean, they don't have to give every, into every QQ that we give, but if there's a lot of criticism towards something, that then they can take a look at it. So yes, yeah. yes, yes. So okay, the question I was going to answer or answer ask you. Um. So I was saying I had two questions. Uh, so I'm not sure how much time we have, but the, the two question is, and I'll I'll let you choose if if we if we're running out of time. You are the one having keeping track of that, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you go for three hours, it's fine. No. Um, so one thing is, does this? They are they are trying to promote this idea that their their idea of fun is different from a subscription-based uh, company's idea of fun or idea of, you know, content, what, what they're focusing on. Their focus point is very right, different. Right, right. Um, do you think it's uh, true? Do you feel it's true after you have read this article that, that, they, are, uh, that they are truly having a different focus point than subscription-based uh, developers? Uh, well, I think, I think so, and I hope so. Because you know, we, we it's it's a bit too early to really answer that entirely. But yeah, if, if, I, if I if I look at World of Warcraft and what it once was and what it is now, a lot of things that they talk about make a lot of sense. You know, uh, World of Warcraft started out with vanilla WoW was this huge world that had lots of stuff to do, even with alts, like you would, there was no way you would get through all the quests on one character, and there was so much stuff to do that it stayed fresh long, for a long time, and they had, there was a reason that they had a long time between patches, they, they had more time to themselves to make that, and the 
content that they came out with was often a lot more high quality and and more than it is now. Whereas now it's more like quick patches, or not quick, but like you know, a patch with one, patch. but you know, a patch with like a dungeon with two dungeons or three dungeons and a raid instance, and that's it. And, and I feel that it's that they do that because they're kind of forced to do that because that's what the community expects every time, and they're not. They, their imagination is not as wild and not as you know they they are not allowed yeah. to do whatever they want pretty much. They kind of their creativeness are very their, crea their, the... their creativeness is very restricted towards what. It just seems like you know that that many uh, players who are playing uh, subscription based games are very entitled about what they what they or they think they are entitled to a lot of things, yeah. and sometimes the developers may just be giving into those ideas. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, they have the power to leave, and then what? Yeah, exactly, and then you're kind of losing your freedom as a developer yeah. uh, to, to experiment, and, you know, I think Guild Wars 2 is very much based on, the, on a, a huge experiment when it comes to gameplays in, in MMOs. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be something they can they can do, because they've, yeah. Yeah. Uh I'm I'm not I, I'm I'm slowly seeing other games turn around as well. I mean, free to play. Sorry, I cut you off, but free to play the way they are designing it is what is the future of MMORPGs. I think the Elder Scrolls Online will make a huge mistake if it's going to be subscription. The, the Secret World is making a huge mistake okay. of doing that because one, it invites people to buy the game and try it. Uh, because they're just paying normal price like any other game and you know how many times do you buy a shitty game I mean you do that quite often just to try it out and two it gives power to the people to when they want to spend money and how they want to spend their money you know it's not like ooh, 12 12 dollars a month I better get something good out of this and you know you don't for weeks you don't get anything until the end and you, you pay like you pay like uh, because how many? Uh, what's the cycle between B patch and WoW? Like five months, four, four months, four or five months, I think. If yeah, not and, more. and that's like a price of a, a new game for just a patch. Whereas in Guild Wars 2, ah, uh, this month I'm not gonna buy anything. Next month, ah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll spend twenty dollars or whatever. But you choose to do that, and you can't say I spend this on this, so I, I, I want something for it because you already got something for it because you're buying something for it already, and it, it I don't know. You're getting something for your money right as right away. Yeah, and it's very visual what you're getting for your money. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a that's a fair point actually. Uh, but I, w I will say though that it seems like a lot of not a lot, but it seems like uh, generally MMOs are trying to go in this direction that Guild Wars 2 has taken. Um, they are of course getting there quite quickly because they have a lot they have all these mechanics in place right from the get go. But stuff like Again, World of Warcraft. Okay, you can now do stuff to get epic gear. That's not that doesn't have any stats, but it looks epic, and you can then use this with the transmogrification thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so this idea where you are getting rewarded for difficult content with stuff that looks cool, with these uh, vanity items instead of actually power, mm -hmm. which is yeah something that it it was one of the points in the in the list here we just went through. Um, so I can see we that all of other companies are realizing that that might be the way to go. And if your game yeah. is good, I think in the end they will make more money. They will that make more money and it gives them the freedom to do what they want, which means their game will only get better if the developers are good, at least. You know. I mean, as far as I know, every more or less every MMO, at least every of the, of the bigger MMOs that went free to play, has made more money afterwards. Yeah, definitely. After the change. Yeah. People seem to be a lot more willing to spend more money on a game that they're enjoying or whether, or perhaps they're just losing track of how much money they're spending. I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, but it's it's probably just easier to have also these small payments. And if you have a lot of small payments and people will just forget that they, oh, I, I, I haven't spent that much and then they realize I spent like uh, $50 doing it yeah. during a month or something. So, uh, But to be honest, I think I think the goals of of subscription-based and free-to-play-based MMOs is going to be aligned somewhat to a, to a more, I mean, a more fun style instead of a more grindy style. The problem is that the, uh, the 
the subscription-based MO will probably have to still put in more content mm -hmm. while trying to keep it fun, and that's yeah, that, but that, that, that that's really really difficult to like, to balance. Like I just said, it's it, it's free to play. It's, it, you can't really say that it's for every free to play model it works like that though, because it works very well in hand in hand with the whole game design that Guild Wars 2 has because because of the dynamic events uh, that keep the content fresher for a much longer period of time than any other game we've previously seen. And that's the advantage that they have that will work really well with the free-to-play model that they have because it gives them more time and you know they have a lot of content that's already fresh and like a lot of stuff will be unexplored even though you're a max level you can still go back and you can still make an alt with different personal stories and that works well with a with a free to play model because the free to play model gives them more time and they're not pressured into making more content because they don't need to yet so yeah i hope i got my point across there i don't know <laughs> but it's well, it's so. an interesting discussion uh really yeah, it is, and it's. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Guild Wars Two works out on that because it's it's hard to. I think I think it's actually. I know, I know what they're saying in this blog post, but I still sometimes have a hard time seeing, you know, the exact place where you can like cut up and say this is a this is supposed to be subscription, this is supposed to be free to play, especially because we have so many uh, subscription base that has moved to f being a free to play game. Yeah. And I could easily I could easily imagine if if Guild Wars Two had proper end game, I guess I could easily see that going as a being being a subscription based uh, game actually. Because it it really has a lot of content, you know. True. Um, but that's not the design that they want to have, though, because then no, they're no, putting, no. Well, they're, they're putting the themselves in a position where you know, if you suddenly have six million people paying per month, you, you get this pressure on you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I get, I get, I, I know, I'm totally down with the decision. I, if you asked me if a couple of years ago, I say free to play, no way, shit go away, fuck off. <laughs> I was very much a WoW fanboy and everything free to play was shit. And like I said, 90% is still is shit. But a lot of games have proven that they're not. Like, Turbine has a pretty damn good free to play model. Guild Wars had a good free to play model. Guild Wars 2 will have a good free to play model. And yep. a lot of other companies have that were once pay to play are now pretty decent free to play models. And it, it proves to work because because of that, the power of the players, you know, it's all about what you want to spend on it and, you know, everything mm -hmm. that we just said. And I think um, now I prefer it over pay to play, especially when they do it like Guild Wars 2, then yeah, I much rather prefer it because I know I will spend money in Guild Wars 2. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, same here. Of course I will. Okay, so last thing then. Mm -hmm. uh, this, so this whole thing in Earth thing, this whole fun in a MMO uh, idea. Where where are we going from here? What what would be fun in an MMO? How how could that concept be developed further? Mm. Well, fun in MMO is mostly just for for you as a player. Being I mean, able what, what? to do stuff together with some people, no matter mm -hmm. what the content is. That's I've always been the most fun for me in World of Warcraft, at least. Uh, you know, especially in the older days where you could find a group and go farm some mobs for a drop or go farm that instance for that fire resistant gear that you needed or you know, farm reputation for whatever and and play together with friends and do something significant. So and that, that I think that's the most important fun part of the MMR yeah. RPG for me. Yeah. So I think personally, I think going yeah going in this direction where there isn't a lot of gating to be able to play with your friends. No, exactly. Um, this whole thing where they actually mentioned that in the article as well. This whole idea with having a long leveling curve to drag out the game because you have to you know you're pay, you're going to pay for the game while you're leveling up and all the fun stuff that then game. Well, fuck all that leveling. Sorry, but. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's What's just, the point I, in World of Warcraft? There's no point in it anymore. No, it's it like, isn't because it's God. just the same bloody thing you're going to do for 90 levels soon. And you're not really getting to learn your class either, because in a Raider variant, your class will work completely different than you have had yeah, leveling your character. Exactly, they're not challenging you. And I mean, but the, the main point is just 
I want to play with my. I'm playing this great MMO, and I want to play with my friends. So I'm asking my friend if he wants to get uh, to to come and play with me, and he's saying yes, I want to come and play with you, and he comes and play with me. But no, wait, because you have to level through eight, ninety levels and have. To and play even if he comes and helps you, your whole immersion is gone because it's like click mob dad, click mob dad, and he <laughs> exactly. kills everything in front of you. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I'm coming to help you. It's cool, and he's just okay. I'm just gonna go follow you, uh, pressing follow on you, and going FK because you're just owning this. Just what? That's yeah, not fun. That's not fun. So I, I think that that's that's where I want to go is that you can always play together with your friends in an MMO. Uh, there shouldn't be all this gating shit for it. No. I, I I think it's cool that there is uh, difficult content, and I think it's cool that there is some kind of some kind of progression somehow. But if you can breach the barriers, like in Guild Wars 2, you can go back and play with your friends in lower level content. If you can breach those barriers somehow, or yeah, going into PvP or what was world, and you automatically can scale. That's the kind of thing I want to see more of. That's the way I want to see the games going, that all this uh, questing at dynamic events is great, and it's great that you can go do them, but I don't want them to be uh, holding me back from playing with my friends or going out and playing difficult, uh, playing some difficult content, you know? Yeah, that about concludes this episode right there. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. That was a lot of rage that has been building up sorry about that no I totally agree <laughs> and it's so refreshing to see that the game uh, so yes I think that was that was the major major thing for me it's so refreshing to see that Arena Net is taking its time to building this this awesome piece of awesomeness yeah right. yes yeah, it's just yeah uh, so let's uh, go with BAM Thieves. <laughs> Thieves are adepts at Art of Stealth. They utilize surprise and shadow to get closer to enemies, and they're deadly in one-on-one -on -one combat. They have an affinity affinity for setting traps and going where they were never meant to go. As an adventure profession, Thieves wear medium armor. So, um, this is the only profession in, ga in the game that has a resource that affects their abilities called initiative which is pretty much energy in a rogue from World of Warcraft except they're dots and you can you know your ability costs so many dots of initiative uh, except for your first ability which doesn't cost anything I'm pretty sure um, we can um, we can look at Second, but that's interesting to see because this this profession is all about getting in burst damage and getting out of it again, and and that's why they're so good in one on one because if you are halfway health and he surprised you, you're probably going to die unless you're really good and manage to get away somehow. So they can use daggers, pistols, swords, short bow. And that's it. It's not a lot of combinations, but uh, you can combine it. You can have like dagger main hand or an off hand, and so it's it's it's, it's nine combinations, which is pretty decent, I guess. Yeah, it, they feel very roguish with with those combination. I love how I love how they are partly arranged class as well. I mean, this this whole uh, dual wielding pistol kind of rogue type. Uh, I, I I love the idea of that actually. Um, and uh, almost considering starting such a character. So the cool part about this is not only are the abilities based on your weapons. The middle web middle ability is always based on the combination of your main hand and off hand together. So it changes. If you are dagger dagger, you get this ability. But if you're dagger pistol, this ability changes to something else. And if you are a pistol dagger, it's again a different ability. So that's really interesting to see as well. Um, but as you can see, no cooldowns on this village, but five, six points, three points, five points, three points, and three initiative. And there are actually traits in this game that increases your initiative by like five points or something like that. So, oops, I just clicked something. How are you, how are you gaining that initiative again, Ozzy? It just uh, slowly builds up again. Ah, all right, all right. So that's why it's... It, this is a really tactical class, and I think that's why I should give it more time to like it. Uh, because you really need to think about what you're going to do. You like go in, burst your damage, and then go out again in stealth or something, and then go back in again. Mm -hmm. And it's all about that. 
And yes, you can use a bow, which uh, is brilliant. And guns, guns, guns sounds so good yeah, in this yeah. game. So good. Exactly. The, those dual wielding, uh, I mean, those uh, thieves are dual wielding pistols, they look amazing. Yeah. To be honest, it's just pure, it's just, uh, you know, Wild West. It is. But I, to be honest, I've, yeah, the, the thief is really what you'd expect from a thief. It has, it has a lot of traps, it's using poisons, it's very much based on trying to control the enemy somehow, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you stun them or slow them or whatever you... Smoke yeah. screen. That's, yeah. yeah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, it, it's not, uh, it's not really based on you know supporting, though. There's there's hardly another utility skills that actually supports your allies. Um, no, there are the signets. There are a few of them that re remove conditions and and uh, from allies. Uh, that's the only thing I can really see. There are probably some other ones. But it, but it is very much yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you don't know what the, what these traits give, right? Because you do get like this healing increase thing. Hmm. Well, oh, uh, increase healing, but yeah, I always think that but was kind of but weird. Sure, that it, it doesn't have a lot of support buffs, but it does have like a lot of cripples and stuff, which also helps. It's, so exactly, it's very much about control. This class. Yeah. Um, which is 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 not a bad thing. That's a way to support as well by controlling the enemy. Uh, indeed, but I actually think it's it's the class that I have where I've seen the least amount of uh, you know s abilities that can directly support your allies. Yeah, and it's also about like those class commas, right? Because you can put down healing rain on the, or a healing ability as an elementalist, and if a thief shoots through that with his bullet bullets, everyone that is close to those bullets will get healed as well. So right, there's a lot of internet cool. mechanics that we don't know about yet that work like that as well, that bring interesting things to the table. So this is uh, underwater abilities. So when you when you played the thief, you you didn't like it that much, you said. Well, I didn't give it a lot of time, and then was char. I'm not a big fan of char. I mean, they look awesome. Don't get me wrong, they're really cool looking <laughs> base, and I love their style and their voices, but. I don't really like to play him all that much, I think. I don't know why. The animation, uh, it's just a bit annoying, I think. A lot of people will hate me for that, but... Uh, I think I need to get more into it, because I found the initiative so restrictive, uh, especially since everything else doesn't use anything like that. But I guess it's just a way of playing that you need to get used to. It's it's possible. Yeah, I still haven't tried. I I like the idea of the thief personally. Uh, yeah. So it's it's more than likely that I'm going to try that out at uh, perhaps in the next. But um. But yeah, it's it's kind of difficult, I guess, when all these with all these different resource systems that or special mechanics that each each profession have. Mm -hmm. I mean, how how are they going to? To balance all them and make them feel good enough, because I, I somewhat agree that if they only have one ability that does not cost initiative, that you really need to well, get that. It's all about the traits. I don't know. You know, they'll probably like reduce and like increase the amount of points that you have and reduce uh, the points that it costs. And yeah, not that much, as far as I can tell. Though, admittedly, there is quite a bit of traits to look through here. Um, and that's all about stealth. And stealth in this game is not permanent, not for any class. There are a few. I think elemental elementalists can have some invisibility. And I think the, uh, mesmer has some invisibility. Revoke has stealth, uh, but it lasts shorter, and you can increase it actually by uh, putting points into trickery. No recharge rate. Sorry, I increase? saw somewhere stealth somewhere. Yeah, in uh, here, stealth at least one second longer. So, but it's all based on that: getting into combat, getting out, and then go back in again and just rape someone's ass that way. It's a completely so different guessing, style than anything else. Yeah, I'm guessing you are, you are, you aren't too strong just toe to toe mm -hmm. with enemies. I mean, you're not going to jump into combat. You're going to walk around and get someone that stands alone in the back and try to kill that guy, <laughs> which is totally awesome. In its own right. Yeah, 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 indeed. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, being more that guy that are just d doing, you know, small things all over the battlefield. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, OC. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what do you think I was going to make? I'm not going to make any comments on that. You, your drawing skill amazes me every time. Right, but uh, that's the thief. Not much more I can say about it uh, other than go check it out and play it and see uh, <laughs> see what you think. Uh, please give us feedback as well if you've played this uh, thief uh, profession. Tell us what you think <laughs> this about thief. it. This thief. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you thought about playing this profession. Uh, yeah. And more yeah, importantly, it's, it's uh, just uh, give us a comment about anything about what we talked about or if you're excited about the strat test or, you know, anything you want to comment on, leave a comment below. And for this picture, like our video and subscribe to our <laughs> channel. For the sake of this, <laughs> awesome. this great burger head, yeah. And, uh, and uh, check out all of the other things we've been doing. Yep, Guild Wars 2 we videos are... and uh, our... Evolution of MMOs and sorry I cut you off. No, I was just gonna say that we are still we are still throwing out some new uh, Guild Wars 2 videos every now and again. We still have some stuff to put out, and you are gonna come with some secret world footage, right? <gasps> yep. I still <laughs> need to compile that shit, um, but it will come out pretty soon. Also, fuck Guild Wars 2. I'm not gonna play it because dice are apparently not a compound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Screw you, Arena Nets. What is what what's what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> um, process. Actually, I don't mind it at all. I think it makes perfect sense. But yeah, um, just gonna make a statement. No, it's fine. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to get more info from us. And uh, until next time, I guess. Yes. See you guys.